Let's go ahead and appreciate him. Jehovah, we appreciate you. We worship you because you are a faithful father. We exalt your holy name because there is none like you. You are God that can do all things. We appreciate you. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him worship. Let's exalt his holy name. Ever faithful, ever loving, ever kind. The great king, the ancient of days, the great I am. Call him his name. Call him his name. Tell him how he is to you. He's the great king. Tell him how he is to you. He's the ancient of days. Tell him who he is to you. He's the mighty man in battle. Tell him who God is to you. Is the one that opened the Red Sea. We worship you. Ancient of days, we worship you. The great king, we worship you. The great I am, we worship you. The one that opened the Red Sea, we worship you. The one that said things and come to pass, we worship you. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We Amen. declare this meeting open in the name of the Father and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Come on. Whether you are watching online or here on side, can you jam your hands together for the Lord Jesus as we bring the choir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. We're just going to have a time of worship. We're going to worship our God. I hope everyone's evening has been great. Good evening to those online. Good evening to those who are in the church. Let's prepare our hearts this evening. You are welcome today. We're going to ask for our praises to rise this evening. All we want, Lord, is for you to be glorified, to be lifted in this place, oh God. Be glorified in this place, Father. Let praises rise from the inside. From the inside of me, may you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill my life from the inside, from the inside. Set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I at home, wherever you are, for you to be all I want is for you, be glorified in our lives, God, be lifted high in our lives, God, all I want is for you, for you to be. Come on, say it to him. All I want. Come on, put anything to the side and just focus on God right now. For you to be, be lifted high. All I want in every 
everything that I do, God, for you to be lifted high. all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the things I made when when it's all about you it's all about you I'm coming back I'm coming back to the heart of when it's all about you it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things. When it's all about you, it's all about you. I'm coming back. All about you. When it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord. When it's all about you, it's all about you. Come on, just say to him that it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Come on at home, say that it's all about him. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah. 
say I'll never, I'll never know how much it costs cost to see my to sin see my upon sin. that cross. Say I'll never know, I'll never know how much it costs. Magnify the name of the Just Lord. Just lift your hands to Him, our God, our Maker, our Shield, the Omnipotent One, the One that has no equal. Come and bless His holy name. It's worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, worthy to be honored. Who can be compared unto our God? Magnify Him, magnify Him, magnify Him, magnify Him. Holy Spirit, we lift you up in this place. Upon the surface of the earth, we lift you up. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. You know, before we go on tonight, I just heard on the news that there is another earthquake in Turkey's Rock, Syria. We want to ask the Lord for his mercy upon the surface of the earth the earth is convulsing oh, yes. the heart is being disrupted many families affected please like an intercessor lift up the nations of Turkey the nation of Syria the Jehovah God of heaven you will take preeminence yes Lord yes Lord show your mercy your mercy your mercy, your mercy, your mercy. As we pray for these nations, let's pray for your nation to wherever you are located, that the glory of the Lord will be upon your land, the power of God will surround your family in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, oh God, take preeminence, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the people said, Come on, let somebody shout hallelujah. Go ahead and give somebody a high five. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is with you. Your joy will be full in the name of Jesus. Thank you for those who are on site. If you move forward a bit so that face to face is better than hundred letters can i hear you amen? amen and the people at home we welcome you in the name of our risen savior jesus christ our lord i want you to invite your friends i want you to text somebody i have no doubt the meeting of tonight is heavenly orchestrated we did not plan it it's not in our calendar but i discovered this when God wants to help a man, yes. he will send him his word. That's right. So I want you to prepare your heart tonight. I know your neighbor is nearby, but please, alone with God. What a word for this season. Faith to overcome adversity. You don't need to say the meaning of adversity to somebody in Turkey right now. You don't need the definition of crisis to somebody, to a boy, to a girl who woke up this morning only never to see the parents again. I was reading the newspaper talking about adversity. Adversity does not know class. That's right. When evil is about to come, anything can happen. Yes. 
Yes. But I love the word. Yes. Order my steps. Yes, Lord. So thy iniquities will not overtake me. I declare to you, upon the surface of the earth, the Lord will guide you. Amen. The Lord will lead you. Amen. The Lord will order your steps Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said this, the man ought always to pray and not to faith. Again, I read it, whether it's true or not. One of the prominent footballers went to play soccer. He was a hero. He scored the whatever goal, last minute, you know, stoppage time, etc. And he was to travel abroad by 11 p.m. But because of the breakthrough, he canceled the flight, slept on his bed after partying, Exactly a few hours later, the earthquake came and he perished. I'm not saying it because maybe it was this. No, no, that's not the focus. The focus is this. Who canceled the flight? Who spoke to him that my friend don't travel? I declare one more time. Yes. The plane that will crash, you will miss your flight. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Adversity, adversity is common to men. If Job saw this, he said that men have been born unto troubles. But Job went through and he survived. Tell yourself, I will survive. I will live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Tonight you will need your Bible. You will need your script. You will need your notes. I want you to write, your word will come. When the word is coming, it's not just coming for you to feel good. Yes. The word will come so that you can make a change in your destiny. I believe in the word of God. Of course, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is light. The word of God is medicine. Let me share one scripture, then I get our speaker to come up. Mark 11. Look at the word. This is Jesus speaking now. In verse 22, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. It does not matter the crisis. Do what? Have faith in God. It does not matter how long the trouble has been on the ground. Do what? Have faith in God. God is so big. God is so mighty. Look at the next verse, 23. And I want you, this is the scripture, a young boy who became a teenager, I believe, that he meditated upon. He was crippled. All his childhood stage, he never played soccer with his friends. Always looking at them play, riding bicycles. He was bedridden. But a day came, he started meditating on this particular scripture. And ladies and gentlemen, he recovered. He was healed. He became a mighty man of God. Some of you, maybe you will know him, called Kenneth E. Hagin. He's gone to be with the Lord. But an evidence of the gospel to prove to all of us, it does not matter. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So maybe you are here tonight, you listen to us all over the world, and you are going through a dark season. Your light will dawn on you. Verse 23, look at the word for verily, Jesus, who cannot lie, says, I say unto you, that whosoever, including you, including me, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, have faith in God, had believed to it shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. 24 and I close. Therefore, come on, say therefore. Let me hear you again. Therefore. Jesus says, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, if you desire it, say it. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So yesterday we learned so much. The present reality, the future reality. The present circumstance, the future circumstance. 
the physical realm and the realm of the spirit. Eyes had not seen, ears had not heard that which God had prepared for those who love him. Your tomorrow will be all right. So tonight, I want you to prepare. I want you to believe the Lord your God. Wherever you are, in your bedroom, in your sitting room, if you're in the car, please concentrate, look on the road, but enjoy the grace. But only one thing, the word of God will look at you. And need the presence of the Lord is so much, please find a spot to park your car so that you can park quietly and speak to the Lord. A word from heaven can change your destiny forever. And tonight, your case will not be different. God will speak to you. God will touch you. God will heal you. I join my faith with yours. 2023, you will laugh. Amen. 2023, you will rejoice. Amen. 2023, you will recover. Amen. As the Lord God of heaven live it, those who are mocking you, this year, they will see your glory. And they will rejoice with you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring in the word again tonight. Uh, sessionally, we call this meeting forth all the way from Ibado, Nigeria, in Africa. All right. Yes, not all of us are from Nigeria. We could see some people from other countries. And then, of course, online, wherever you are. I want us to welcome this man of God, apostle of God, a pastor, a father, and uh, a good friend. Please welcome with me, Reverend Tunde Chayebo. Come on. Online. Thumbs up. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands and worship the Lord tonight. Yes, Lord. Father, give him praise and give him glory. Oh, we are grateful, Lord. Just honor him tonight. Faithful is our God. Faithful is our God. Let's honor him. Oh, he's a faithful God. The God of all flesh, the maker of heaven and earth. We give a glory. We give a praise. For you are worthy. Worthy, worthy are you, O Lord. Bless his name tonight. Bless his name tonight. Oh, online and on ground, worship the Lord tonight. We bless your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, for your ministry. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We give you access. We lift up your name like a banner in the sky tonight. I will bless your name. We give a glory and we give a praise. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We depend upon you tonight. You will teach us. You will give us revelation. You will empower us to do the word. Our lives will not be the same again. We will triumph in the midst of adversity. We will walk in triumph. We will walk in victory. Receive your ministry. Receive your word tonight, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Please take your seats. Let me thank Reverend Adeleke again tonight for the privilege to be here tonight. I'm really honored and privileged. Thank you, sir, uh, for the great work God is using you to do. More strength, more grace in Jesus' name. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. Well, yesterday we were talking about faith to overcome in the midst of adversity. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. Are you shooting yourself in the foot? Are you shooting yourself in the foot. Many times when we have adversity, we shoot ourselves in the foot. Sometimes adversity is a result of having shot ourselves in the foot. And in the midst of adversity, we shoot ourselves in the foot. That is, we inadvertently, ignorantly, carelessly bring difficulties into our lives, thereby truncating our faith. So we want to look at that tonight, because if you don't handle what we're discussing tonight, faith might not work in the midst of adversity. Let's go to Proverbs 6, verse 2. Proverbs 6, verse 2 as our text tonight. Proverbs 6, 2 as our text. Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. Proverbs 6, 2, King James says, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. 
Many times we are careless and we are our own enemies. We think people, circumstances, the devil is our enemy, but many times we are our own enemies. We self-sabotage ourselves. How do we do that most of the time? By our words. Our words many times make us to shoot ourselves in the foot. Because what are so critical, what are so important, if you don't understand the importance of words, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. That's what I'm asking tonight. Are you shooting yourself in the foot? Words can either give life or give death. If you speak the wrong words, you speak death. Speak the right words of faith, you are speaking life. And many people, they are ignorant and careless about the importance of words. And faith operates by words. God is a speaking God. is a speaking spirit. Faith also works by words. But once you don't understand the importance of words, your faith will not work. And adversity will be prolonged. We'll have unnecessary delays where we should not have a delay because we're shooting ourselves in the foot because we're speaking the wrong words. Now, look at our text, Proverbs 6 2. Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. That verse divided to two parts. The first part is, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. The word snared means trapped. So the first stage of negative words is entrapment. Once you speak wrong words, anti Bible words, anti truth words, you get trapped. You are not yet taken, but you are incapacitated. You are still alive, but you are demobilized. You are still moving, but you are restricted. Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Then the next stage is thou art taken. You cannot be taken if you are not snared. So most times when we speak wrong words, we're still moving around, we're still running the business, we're still running the marriage, we're still doing what they're supposed to do, but we have been incapacitated, we've been restricted, we've been imprisoned, but the next thing is thou art taken. That is, you are now out of position. You are now under the control of another force. When you are taken, you are under the control of another force. But you cannot be taken if you are not snared. So your words ensnare you if they are negative. And once you are ensnared by negative words, the next step you're going to be out of position. Most adversities is because we are out of position. You are supposed to have finances, but adversity means you don't have finances. You're supposed to be healthy. Adversity says you are not healthy. Marriage is supposed to work, but it's not working. We are out of position, and many times it's the result of wrong words. Now, the devil can never get a Christian without the Christian's permission. It's not possible. And how do you give the devil permission? Number one, by sin. Sin opens the door to the devil. Number two, words open the door to the devil. So when you speak wrong words, you open the door to the devil. You invite the devil into your situation, to your life. So you need to understand that we are ensnared. We are trapped by the words of our mouth. Wrong words get you trapped, incapacitated, restricted, imprisoned. And then after a while, you are taken, you are out of position because of your wrong words. You are now in the control of a negative force because of your wrong words. So we need to understand the importance of words if you're going to have faith to overcome adversity. Now, your words determine your direction in life. Your, works, the, the, your words determine where your life will flow. James 3, verse 3 to 5. James 3, 3 to 5, I just paraphrase, says, you know, um, a horse, a big horse, is controlled by small bits in the mouth. A small instrument controls a big horse. It now says, a big sheep driven by fierce wind, is controlled by a small helm, a small control. That is, small things control big things. And that says in verse 5, so is the tongue. So your tongue is a small member, but it controls your life. So your life right now is the consequence 
of the way you have been speaking. Your marriage is a result of the consequence of what you have been Of course, there are other factors, but your tongue determines your direction. So many adversities is a result of speaking wrong things. When you say the wrong things, you shoot yourself in the foot. And once you say the wrong thing, faith will not work. Faith works with words. God is a speaking spirit and faith involves speaking. But once you speak wrong words against the word of God, faith will not work. And that's the missing link for many Christians when it comes to faith. They are praying, they are working hard, but they are speaking wrong. We spend time to pray, we spend time to fast, we work hard, but we're speaking wrong. Once you speak wrong, every other thing you have been doing that is right is canceled. Faith will not work if your speech is contrary to the word of God. Look at Psalm 34, verse 12, I read from the NLT. Psalm 34, 12, NLT, it says, Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? That's a question. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Long life and a prosperous life. It says, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. What is a lie? A lie is anything contrary to the word of God. So if you want a long life, a prosperous life, don't speak lies. Lies are things contrary to the word of God. So when I speak contrary to the word of God, then I am not going to live a long life and a prosperous life. Shooting yourself in the foot. Speaking the wrong words. Because words have power. Words are spiritual. Words have power. And in the spirit, there's no comedy in the spirit. Don't say, I was just joking. Once you have said it, you have said it. On the earth here, there's comedy. Oh, we're just joking. But in the spirit, any word you speak has power. So you can't say, I was just joking. No, you are not joking. Every word you speak is either attracting a demonic spirit or activating angels. Psalm 103 verse 20. 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord with his angels that excel in strength. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord with angels who excel in strength. Psalm 103 verse 20. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. That is, angels are activated when they hear the voice of God's word. So each time you speak the word of God, each time you exercise faith by speaking, angels are released. Very important. Contrawise, when you speak what against the word of God, then demons are also activated. So, many times our adversity is prolonged because of wrong words, because of negative words, because of contrary words to the word of God, adversity is prolonged, and because of wrong words, our faith doesn't work in the midst of adversity. So, are you shooting yourself in the foot. What have you been saying? If you are speaking trouble, you will eventually get into trouble. If you are speaking difficulty, you're eventually going to have a lot of problems. If you are speaking adversity, life will be difficult. You, you have what you say. You have what you say. So when you don't understand these things, then adversity is prolonged. So what do we need to do? That's the most important thing we need to look at. What do we need to do? Number one, you must understand that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the first thing to do, not to shoot yourself in the foot, to make your faith to work, is to feed your mind with the right materials. Feed your mind with the right materials. What are the right materials? Any material that is not against the word. Like they say, garbage in, garbage out. If you keep feeding on fear, then you're going to speak fear. And once you speak fear, you will experience fear. If you keep feeding your mind with difficulty, you're going to 
talk difficulty and experience difficulty. So feed your mind with the right materials. Read the Word. Read the Bible. Read words that are in line with the Word of God. Feed your mind with the Word of God. That will help that word to be in abundance in your heart. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you feed your mind with the word of God, then when you speak, it is what is inside you that will be released. How do you know your mind is fed with the right materials? What you say under pressure. If there's pressure, what you say at that point tells us what is inside you. Ah, yay, it is over. Oh, that means what is inside you is nothing but fear and inability. So feed your mind constantly with the word of God. Let no day pass whereby you don't either hear or read or study the word. Feed your mind with the word. That also means you need to renew your mind. Romans 12, 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you have been living the world for a long time, be hearing so much negative news, be hearing saying so many things, your mind is like a computer. You have loaded your mind with a lot of data that is negative. If you don't delete that data, that data will affect your life. So you need to delete that data and put new data there. It now says, be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word there is metamorphosis. Let your mind be metamorphosized. That is, let the old data be removed. The data of fear, of anxiety, of insecurity, of failure, you need to delete that data and put God's data, the word of it, in your heart so that out of that abundance, you can now speak. So metamorphosis, of course, that is all level biology. A butterfly starts first as an egg. When you see the egg, it doesn't look like a butterfly. So your mind might not look right yet, but it is a process. But be ye transformed, be ye metamorphosized. The egg goes to, what's the next thing after egg? Is lava, then pupa, then imago, and then the butterfly. It's a process. So the renewal of your mind is a process. Don't be in a hurry, but constantly be processing your mind with the God, word of God so it can be renewed. If you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by, speaking, by not speaking right, feed your mind with the word of God every day. Every day. Number two, understand that words are creative. Words are creative. So create your future by your words. Create your future by your words. In the beginning, God said, let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. So you create your future that you desire by your words. No, we said yesterday, search the word for his promises. So your present tense reality might not be right. What is God saying? Search the mind of God. Search the word of God. And then see that which God has said by hearing. By hearing. And then you begin to believe, you begin to see, then begin to speak. The speaking has creative power. When you say, by his stripes I am healed, you are creating healing, as it were, to be manifest in your life. The healing is available, but your speaking creates it into natural manifestation. So you must understand that what are creative you have what you say. So what are creative? So consciously speak the future you desire. Consciously speak the words you have discovered in the word of God about your future reality into existence. What are creative? You become what you say. Number three, activate angels by your words. I've explained that. So 103 verse 20. When you speak God's word, angels are on assignment. Bless the Lord, you angels that excel in strength, Hackening unto the voice of his word. So you want angels to work in your situation, to work in your business, work in your home. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Angels activated as you speak the word of God. 
Number four, discipline yourself never to speak wrong words. It takes discipline. Discipline yourself never to speak wrong words. That's why you must have what I call an accountability partner. So when you speak wrong words, they can correct you. Don't joke with wrong words. Don't play with wrong words. Discipline yourself that you don't speak wrong words. Don't say things like, I'm dying to see you. Are you really dying to see me? No, you're not dying to see anybody. But you have said it, you have spoken death into existence. This thing is just crazy. Is it really crazy? So we say these things as a joke, but like I told you, there's no joke in the spirit. If you are dying to see somebody, you, in the spirit, you have released death into oppression. So it's important that you understand that you must discipline yourself not to speak wrong words. Number four, speak to things. Speak to things. So when there's adversity, when there's crisis, you must learn that you must speak to things. Now the pastor earlier quoted the scripture when I want to emphasize that. Mark 11, learn to speak to things. Let's look at the example of Jesus. Mark 11 from verse 12 to 14. Mark 11, 12 to 14. Now we see some things here. I want to emphasize on this. Mark 11, 12 to 14. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. What does that mean? Jesus had a need. Jesus had the need to be fed. He was hungry. Bible says he was a man subject to lack passions as we are. So he understands when you also have a need. So he had the need. So what did he do? Verse 12. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if perhaps he might find anything thereon. That is, he saw a fig tree afar off. Oh, thank God. My hunger will be satisfied. That was what Jesus, I'm just trying to explain that. So Jesus saw a fig tree afar off. So he was saying, fine, I'm hungry. This fig tree will have fig fruit I can eat, and my hunger will be quenched. Verse 12, and see the fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if perhaps he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Let's explain that. When figs have leaves, they have fruit. When figs have leaves, in this situation, they also have fruit. So when Jesus was hungry, he had the need to be fed. He was hungry. Then he saw a fig tree afar off having leaves. So the assumption was that the fig tree that had leaves has fruit. If he has fruit, then Jesus would take the fruit. His hunger will be quenched. Do you understand that? Very important. It says the time of figs was not. So this fig tree was a deceptive tree. It was not a time of figs, but this fig tree already had leaves. Assume on the assumption she also had fruit. So when Jesus got there, he found nothing but leaves. What did Jesus do? Very important. Naturally, Jesus was disappointed. He wasn't happy. His hopes were dashed. Because he thought, if I see this fig tree having leaves, I will have fruit and quench my hunger. So he was disappointed. Jesus was disappointed. What did Jesus do? We must do what he did when we are disappointed. When adversity comes, we are disappointed. When adversity comes, we are frustrated. Adversity comes, our hopes are dashed. What did Jesus do when he faced adversity here? Verse 14, very important. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Question, who talked to Jesus? You don't answer except you are spoken to. You don't answer except somebody asks you a question. 
You don't answer somebody has spoken to you. And Jesus answered and said unto it, it, not him. So what is the issue here? Jesus said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard what he said. Jesus answered and said unto it, who is the it? The fig tree. When you have adversity, do you speak to the adversity or about the adversity? Most people speak about the adversity, not to the adversity. Amen. You can clap if you want to clap. Yeah. That's it. That's it. We speak about it, not to. Jesus did not speak about the problem. He spoke to the problem. Many times we are commenting on the problem instead of speaking to the problem. And Jesus answered and said unto it, specifically to the tree, and said, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. Because the tree was talking to Jesus. Oh, man of God, your hopes are dashed. Oh, man of God, you cannot eat. Oh, man of God, you are still hungry. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. I won't take that. I won't take that. No man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And the disciples had it. He did not speak it in his mind. He spoke it out. The disciples had what he said. Now jump down to verse 20 to see the commentary on the scripture. So speak to the adversity. Speak to your kidney. Speak to your liver. Speak to your ovaries. Speak to your business. Speak to your bank account. Speak to your building. Speak to it. Speak to it. Don't talk about it. Speak to it. Very important. So see what happened. Jesus in verse 20. And in the morning, the next day, 24 hours later in the morning, as they passed by, Jesus' disciples passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now that means when Jesus spoke, nothing happened physically. When we speak, nothing happens physically. But something is happening. Something is happening. <laughs> Something is happening. It was in the morning that they saw the fig tree. So many times when we speak to things, it looks like it is not working, but it is working. So on the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root, right from the root. It went down, down, down the root. When you are speaking to things, the word is affecting the foundation of that problem. That's why it takes time sometimes for those words to work. It's going down to the foundation. The fig tree dried up from the root. Verse 21. And Peter calling to remember say, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Master, look, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Jesus now said, okay, let me teach you a lesson. Let me tell you some principles of faith. 22, and Jesus answering said unto them, people now. Before he answered it, now he is answering them. So he can speak to things and to people. Answering and said unto them, have faith in God. The religion says, have the God kind of faith. He was trying to explain what happened when he spoke to things. So you must understand when you speak to things, what happens. So this verse 22, 23, 24 is an explanation of what happened to the future that Jesus spoke to. So speak to your body, speak to your business, speak to your children, speak to your bank account, speak to things that are not working. Things that in your present tense reality are not what you want it to be. Learn to speak to them and to it and not about them. Stop speaking about the marital problem. Speak to the marital problem. Stop speaking about the financial problem. Speak to the financial problem. So Jesus now explained, said, listen to me now. Have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. He now explains verse 23. 
For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, whosoever, that means you and I are included, whosoever shall say, not think, not imagine, whosoever shall say, shall say unto, unto this mountain, not that mountain, but this one. Specifically, you must speak to things. Say unto this mountain, not that mountain. That mountain is not my problem, but this mountain is my problem. You must specify where you have adversity and speak to it specifically. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, you have a kidney problem, speak to the kidney, not to your liver. Very important. Very important. Very important. You go to the doctor and say, well, your ovaries are not producing the right kind of eggs. Speak to the ovaries, not to your womb. Very important. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, not that mountain. So your speaking must be targeted. When you speak to things, it must be targeted. It must be focused. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. So he's speaking to a mountain. A mountain is inanimate. Trees are inanimate, so we have scripture here that we can speak to things. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Here he's, he's talking about speaking to the mountain. So he can speak to things that are not human beings. Why is this possible? Because everything is created by words. So everything has ears, as it were. In the beginning, God said, that's how he created everything. So everything has ears. So whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be Thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Speak to things. Speak to things. What must we do about our words, not to shoot ourselves in the foot? Number one, you need to understand that you must feed your mind with the right materials. It's really the word of God. Number two, understand that words are creative. Words are creative. Number three, activate angels by your words. Psalm 103 verse 20. Number four, discipline yourself not to speak evil words. Number five, speak to things. Speak to things. Speak to things. Speak to your marriage. Speak to your career speak when there's a strife in the office, office politics that's against you, speak to the politics. I terminate this politics in this office in the name of Jesus. Speak to things. It might look like it's not working like Jesus, it looked like it's not working for 24 hours, but after the tree was dried up from the roots, learn to speak to things. If you're not going to shoot yourself in the foot and your faith must work, you must learn to speak. Now, there's a story in Mark chapter 5. Jairus came to Jesus. My daughter is at the point of death. Come and touch him and heal her. So they were going to the house of Jairus. And of course, along the way, um, a woman with issue of blood for 12 years came, interrupted the, the, the procession. She got healed. And the Bible says, as they were going to the house of Jairus, Satan came from the house of Jairus and said, Ah, master, the daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. The Bible says immediately Jesus had those words, he did not allow the man to speak. What you say in adversity determines how long it's going to last. And that's the point where many people make a mistake. Say, I'm finished. Ah, it is over. Why me? Ah, what will I do? Once you speak those wrong words, you prolong the lifespan of the adversity. You must learn not to speak the wrong. You don't know what to say. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Tonight, we're going to cancel every wrong word we have spoken against ourselves. In deliverance, we call it self-imposed curses. You curse yourself by yourself. And sometimes when adversity comes, you say, I will never trust a man again. I will never be in a church again. I will never employ a Christian again. 
They are called self-imposed causes. And many times, a cause will remain in operation until it is broken by a higher power. So some what we have spoken on the past is operating over our lives now, and until we terminate those operations, we still are under the influence of those words. So we're going to pray three prayers tonight. The first one is to revoke every self-imposed cause. You have spoke, some things happen unexpectedly. You had some crisis. You were jilted. You were cheated, taking advantage of your abuse. And you spoke some words against yourself. Ah, because there are two moments in your life you must be careful about your words. There are two moments of emotional, emotional high. One, when you are very sad, what you say is very powerful. And when you are very happy, very powerful. Those two moments are times of danger. When you are very, very excited and when you are very, very sad. Something bad happens. Ah! The way my father treated my mom. Ah! I will never trust a man again. Now you are married. You don't trust your husband. You are wondering why. You are under a self-imposed cause. But tonight, the cause is reversed. Say the cause is reversed. You did business with a Christian. The business went well. After a while, that Christian jilted you and went to America. Say, ah, I will never do business with Christians again. Now you are finding it difficult to get partners in your business who are Christians. You have forgotten there's a self-imposed cost against yourself. Many times you forget what we have said. But those words are still in operation. But tonight... Those words that are negative, they are canceled in the name of Jesus. Say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus every, curse every curse I place upon myself, place upon myself knowingly, knowingly, unknowingly, unknowingly. Tonight, tonight I revoke, I revoke those, words, those words, I cancel, I cancel those, curses, those curses in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. apply. I apply, I apply the, blood the blood of Jesus and I declare, and I declare those, curses, those curses, they are canceled, they are, canceled, they, are they are terminated in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Every curse I've been put upon myself, I cancel in the name of Jesus. Every word I've spoken against my marriage, I cancel in the name of Jesus. I cancel in the name of Jesus. We revoke in the name of Jesus. Maraco Sotoria, every word working against us, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every word spoken against us in our businesses, in our marriages, we destroy those words. We cancel terminate in the name of Jesus. Marata katori arabas, raleke to brakasata, mrangaro kara, rakato brakasatari arabas, rekoto brakasata. Every seven post curse, we cancel by the blood. We cancel by the blood. We cancel by the blood. Every adversity caused by wrong words, we terminate. We bush. We terminate. We terminate. In the name of Jesus. We terminate. In the name of Jesus. We revoke by the blood of Jesus. We revoke by the blood of Jesus. Reke seteli alabas. Relele le bush. Reke seteli alabas. Raka satali alabas satali alabosh. Reke sete. Redes. Redes. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. The second thing we're going to do is to cancel every curse imposed upon us by those in authority over us. There are five people that are critical to our lives that can impose a curse over us. And we need to cancel those words. Now, the first person is your father. What your father says over you can be a curse. Number two is your husband. What your husband says over you as a wife can be a curse. Number three, your teacher. Don't allow your teacher to tell your child, this child doesn't know mathematics. That's a curse. Number four, your pastor. Number five, your boss. So sometimes we do things that provoke these people to curse us. Look at um, some, sorry, Proverbs 26 verse 2. Proverbs 26, 2, as a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so a curse, costless, shall not come. When you provoke these five people and they say certain things, they become a curse. That leads to adversity. 
You say, I want to resign. So I start my business. Your boss says, no. Now I'm going. I'm going. He says, okay, go. Let's see what will happen. Hey. That's a cost. That's a cost. Your husband, you fight and you just, and he says, ah, you this woman, you this woman, hmm, you this woman, hmm. the way you are going, hmm, you get into trouble. It's a cost. You have a child. He says, you this boy, you, hmm. the day you get into trouble, you will get to trouble, you will see what will happen. He will get into trouble, the whole family will be in trouble. Hey. Causes. Say after me, Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, in any way, in there's any, any curse any operating over my life tonight by the blood of Jesus, I revoke, I, revoke, I cancel, I, cancel, I, terminate, I terminate such curses in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. We must not shoot ourselves in the foot by wrong words. Every word working against us, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Every self-imposed cause, causes from those in authority, from husbands, from fathers, from bosses, from, 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 from our husbands, we cancel in the name of Jesus. We cancel, we cancel in the name of Jesus. We cancel in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Now say after me, lift your right hand and say after me, Father, Father I thank you. Thank you. You, are my shepherd. you are my shepherd. I have, I have all sufficiency all of all things. Of all things. I, abound I abound to every good work. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. I, I declare I in the name of Jesus, I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of God. The eyes of my understanding is enlightened. I'm strengthened with might by God's spirit in my inner man. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever I lay my hands to do, prosper. I enter into the realm of more than enough. I enter into the realm of ease, of speed, and understanding results. From today, I declare I am blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus, men shall see my good works and glorify my Father in heaven. Every fig tree that is operating in my life, not planted of God, I declare, dry up, dry up, in the name of Jesus. Every mountain, every difficulty, militating against my progress, I command the mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, in the name of Jesus. I declare to every mountain before me, I shout, grace, 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 from today, my life is a marvel, my life is is a wonder. Begin to thank God tonight and give him praise. Thank you, Father. Oh, give him thank praise. You, Lord. Thank you, Father. You have thank released you, power. Thank release you, the word of faith. Thank you, Lord. You release blessing thank upon you, your Father. life tonight. In the name of give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Give him praise. In the name of Jesus. God is at work in you. Angels are on assignment tonight. Angels are on assignment tonight. Online and on ground, angels are on assignment. The angels of blessing, the angels of increase, the angels have been released to walk on your behalf tonight. You have spoken the word of God, spoken the word of faith. Angels have been activated tonight by the word you have spoken. The curse is reversed. The curse is reversed. The curse is reversed. The blessing is activated. Ah, increase is your portion. Abundance is your portion. Healing, 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 healing. We rebuke every sickness and every disease and every infirmity. We speak healing. I speak solution to your problem. I speak answers to your questions. Answers, answers, answers. Reconciliation of marriages. Reconciliation of father to mother. Father to children. Reconciliation. We speak reconciliation. Oh, we speak restoration. Sevenfold restoration. In the name of Jesus. Every mountain before us is removed tonight. Mountain be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. Mountain be removed. Be cast into the sea. Mountain of crisis. Mountain of barrenness. 
be removed be cast into the sea. Mountain of sickness be removed be cast into the sea. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing, we speak deliverance, restoration, abundance, manifest answered prayers. We command the release. In the name of Jesus, the mountain of delay, you are removed. In the name of Jesus, delayed childbearing is destroyed tonight. Delay of barrenness destroyed tonight. In the name of Jesus, we release the blessing. We release the increase of our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus, we step into our wealthy place. We step into our wealthy place. In the name of Jesus, the abundance begins now. The blessing begins now. The answer prayers begin now. In the name of Jesus, we release the abundance. We release the promotion. We release the advancement. We release the lifting. We release expansion. In the name of Jesus, Raka Satali Alabosh. Go ahead and give him praise tonight. In the name of give him praise tonight. You, I will no longer shoot myself you, in the foot. I will no longer, will no longer shoot, shoot myself in the foot. In the name I empower of myself by the word yes, of God. Ah, in the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. I declare yes, my future is bright. Yes, my present is glorious. My present is glorious. My future is bright. In the name of Jesus. Call forth your spouse. Call forth your child. Call forth your job. Call forth your papers. Call forth your increase, we call it forth what are created. We call forth husbands, we call forth wives, we call forth children, we call forth pregnancies, we call forth marriages, we call forth healings in the name of Jesus. We call for reconciliations, we call for houses, we call for the anointing, we call for the graces, we call for favor, 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 favor. We call it forth, we call it forth, we call it forth, we call it forth. In the name of Jesus, call it forth, call it forth. There's power in your mouth. There's power in your mouth. There's power in your mouth. Call your healing. Call your promotion. Call your spouse. Call your marriage. Call the pregnancy. Call the marriage. Call the job. Call the promotion. We call it money. Come. Increase. Come. Oh, barrenness. Go. Barrenness. Go. Pregnancy. Come. Marriage come, go. spouse come, abundance come. In the name of Jesus, raka satari alabas, raka alabas satari alabos, reke satari alabas. Ramba, but we call for answers, answers, answers. We call for solutions, answers, solutions, answers, solutions. We call it forth, we call it forth. Right now, we call it forth. It is happening right now. It is happening right now. Oh, is it now, God? Faith is now. Faith is now. Faith is now. It is now. Faith is now. Now the healing is here. Now the blessing is here. Now the favor is here. Now the abundance is here. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we call you forth. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Blessed be your name. Glory be to God. Father, we are grateful tonight. We receive your word with thanksgiving. Yes, this word is mixed with faith in our yes, hearts. Lord. And bear forth fruit to your glory. Bless him, bless him. Give the yes, Lord a big hand of praise tonight. Ooh. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord.
wherever you are if you can i want you to stand we change the atmosphere isaiah the prophet prophesied isaiah 33 verse 24 and the bible says the inhabitants when the prophecy was coming there was nothing but you see the inhabitants shall say this is the word of the lord please listen to me child of god you will not say again that you are sick you will not say again that you are poor you will not say again that you are weak as the lord god of heaven live it it is written out of your belly touch your belly right now and prophesy prophesy andrew adeliki out of your belly shall flow forth rivers of joy rivers rivers of life out of your belly will come forth joy in the holy ghost for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world andrew delica you are more than the conqueror andrew delica you will prosper you will have speed you will go forward it shall be well with you professor over your children over your husband over your wife over your business declare declare call it forth call it forth by his tribes you are being healed by his tribes come on speak financial success to yourself in the name of jesus thank you father we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the adoration in jesus name we pray and the people said come on jam your hands together in the lord and give a loud shout of victory please be seated you know when we call this meeting to be honest with you i promise myself we're doing this meeting online and online family may the lord bless you uh what a joy to be alive today when they are saying casting down we are declaring we shall be lifted you will see the end of this year you will see it gloriously you will see it powerfully in the mighty name of jesus you know we're going to take our offering and uh, i told i told the pastor i said who is fit in this season to do this but him after the word that we have received i sat there thank god he knows me very well he's still trying to call me brother demola i say hey i'm papa <laughs> In the days of small beginnings, son, when we we're back in Africa, I don't know, for whatever reason, God just showed me his special kindness. Number one, I was moving with people who were older than myself. But this largeness of heart, so all of them, I used to tell them, I was the chief bus driver in our church. Can you imagine? The driver professing about his future. And there was nothing. There was no color. But... The word of faith. Calling those things that be not as if they are in existence. I don't know who you are upon the surface of the earth. The present reality may be that you are small and you are few. Your future will be glorious in the name of Jesus. So, Pastor, please come and take our offering and then prophesy because we want heaven. And listen to me, sir with all humility i want a token i want to share my testimony somewhere that when you came to england there was a shift can i hear your amen it is 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 one thing like he, he rightly said the father jesus spoke to the fig tree and nothing happened physically it does not mean nothing had happened the tree, the code, the genetic code, whatever you call it, the chemistry of heaven was at work. There is an angel somewhere that needs to attend to your needs. There is a fish 
carrying your resources. This season, you will catch that fish. In this season, you will meet that angel. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Tunde, you do that, then I'll come back. Come on, let's give the Lord a good hand. Thank you, sir. You know, there are at least four reasons why we give our offerings. Um, number one, our offering is an offering. It's a sacrifice. That's what we call it, offering. We are offering it unto God. Two things we do basically in church that go straight to God, that relates to God directly. The first is our praise and worship. We're worshiping the Lord. And then our offering, our giving is unto the Lord. So the first one we give is because it's an offering, it's a sacrifice. So we're sacrificing unto the Lord. So it's done with reverence. Number two is because we are commanded to. So our giving is an act of obedience. And Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, we eat the good of our land. So our giving, our offering, is an act of obedience in line with God's commandment. Number three, our giving is an act of love. If you love somebody, you give to the person. But we love the Lord, we give to the Lord. So third reason is we give because we love God. And the fourth reason is when we give, God also gives back to us. Luke 6, 38, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking the run of us shall make given unto your bosom. So four reasons why we give in church. One, it's a sacrifice, it's an offering unto the Lord. It's an act of worship. Two, it's in obedience to a commandment to give. Three, it's, what's the third one? I'm sure you're following me. Offering, offering it's, it's a sacrifice, an act of obedience. It's an act of love. And four, because God also gives back to us. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, 9, 8. I read two scriptures and then we'll take the offering tonight. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8 from the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8 Amplified. Let each one give as he has made up his mind. So make up your mind tonight, online and on ground. Make up your mind. I'm going to give a good offering to the Lord based on four reasons. One, I'm giving an offering worthy of a sacrifice unto God. I'm giving as an act of obedience. And Bible says, if I'm willing and obedient, I will the good of a land. I'm giving because I love God. I'm giving God a love offering tonight. And because God will give back to me. He says, let each one give as he has made up his mind and proposed in his heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, that is, it takes pleasure in prices above other things. Is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver. Whose heart is in his giving. So that means your giving also makes God glad. When you give somebody you love a gift, there's gladness. So your giving tonight should make God to be glad. Now the part I'm going to is verse 8. What God does based on our offering that is correct. And God is able, that is God has ability. God is able to make all grace, that is every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. So that you may always, not sometimes, not most times, that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever they need be self-sufficient, that is, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish an abundance for every good work and charitable donation. That's what God says when we give our offering to him. So tonight, let's give an offering that is a sacrifice that is an act of worship an offering that is an act of obedience offering that is an act of love and god says he will make us have all grace every favor earthly blessing come to us in abundance so that we may always and under all circumstances whatever they need be self-sufficient requiring no or support so as you give your offering online and on ground tonight you want to um, write a check, you want to do a transfer, you want to give electronically, let's do that and I'm going to pray. If you want an envelope, the ushers will give you an envelope, then we'll pray. We'll pray using 2 Corinthians 9, 8 as our prayer. So let, let me give you some few seconds to uh, fill in your form or do your transfer on your phone. If you're online, the details are of course on the screen online. Okay, let's pray together. Lift your offering or lift your phone and say, Father, thank you because you are able to make all grace. So tonight, as I bring my offering, I receive all grace 
that is every favor and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that I will always and under all circumstances whatever they need I declare I will be self-sufficient I will possess enough to require no aid or support I'll be furnished in abundance for every, for every good work and charitable donation. Father, we lay hold on your scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. We'll stand on this word as we give our offering tonight. Let this be our reality. In the name of Jesus, your word says, angels hacking unto the voice of your word. Yes, we have spoken your word to you tonight. We ask that your angels are activated in our financial life. We work in financial abundance, financial increase, financial ease in the name of Jesus. As many as have custody and control of the resources and money meant for us, we command the release tonight. In the name of Jesus, we terminate lack, we terminate not enough, we enter the room of abundance. Receive our offering tonight. Let it rise before you as a sweet smelling server that will make your heart glad. We're grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. that other children will attend. You will dig a well. You will win many souls for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. We need to dismiss our friends online. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. We love you. Come on, clap for them. Clap, 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 clap. Amen and amen. Amen and amen.